as you set things in order, that peace that comes, it goes past any of the other thoughts we've ever had. And it brings this fulfilling security that comes only from centering ourselves in the person of God. And why wouldn't that be so? We are your children. We are your beloved. So Jesus, we've come here for you. We've come here for you. We didn't come to worship so you would come. We know you're already here. But may our worship heighten our awareness of your already ever presence. Never leaving, never forsaking, never leaving us behind, orphaned. You are always close, always near. May our worship kind of take away the deadness of our own nervous system that misses you over and over again. Father, in our worship, in our turning, we become aware again of your love. We become aware again of your attention to us in every detail. It all matters to you. Forgive us for thinking it doesn't. That's just in our in our numbness that we think that, but in our awareness, in our turning and recognizing of who you are and how close you are, we recognize how lovingly attentive you are. Thank you for being near. Thank you for caring. Jesus, thank you for caring about us. presence is so sweet, Jesus. So let's worship him turned. Let's worship him face to face. Let's not worship him by our lips only, but let's worship him heart to heart, face to face. Let's not sing songs. Let's talk to him. Do you hear my words today? Let's not sing a song because it's on a screen. Let's communicate, commune, relate to the Lord, our Father, the very Spirit that gives us breath. Let this be intimate today. Let this be personal today. Let's go past in Moses' temple, the outer court. Let's even go past the brazen altar that the, the Moses tabernacle had. Let's go through that inner court to the place where people thousands of years ago only dreamed about what it was like on the inside but was so fearful to go in. There is no fear now because we know the one behind the curtain loves us eternally and completely and cares. So we go into that place. We go into that holy place where it's you and it's us. It's Jesus, and it's us. 
What would it be like? How would you worship? How would you relate to God if you knew that you were the one that got to go past that veil, that curtain, into that special place that's right here? That's right now. This is our privilege as His children to go into that place and sing and worship and talk and pray there. We love you, God. We love you, God, and we love you because you've loved us first. That's how we're able to love you. So, Father, if there's anyone in here struggling today to receive this love, Father, I ask, just like you did to me, just like you did to me 29 years ago where you broke through my ignorance, you broke through my own self-serving, you came through it so gently but so strong and you showed me how much you loved me. Would you do it for someone in this room today? Would you go through the walls of rejection? Would you go through the walls that say I'm unworthy? Would you go through the walls that say I've had done too much wrong? And would you remind in those deep, quiet places the depth of your love for us? Your son, your daughter, your beloved one, go through those things that we can experience the love like we've never experienced before. We are loved by God. What a privilege it is to say that. We are loved by God. What an honor it is to say we are loved by God. And now we love you back. We love you back with our song. We love you back with our attention. We love you back with our thoughtful consideration of how good you are. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. God, you are so good that when I wasn't even looking for you, you came and you showed me how important I am to you. Thank you for your love for me, God. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet if you aren't already. Let's stand to our feet. Let's honor the one who loves us before we loved him. Worthy is the God who loves us. Worthy is the God who heals us. Worthy is the God who thinks about us when we don't think about him. Worthy is the God who made us worthy.
offering of praise and training your heaviness. Here's a garment of praise for your heaviness. Beautiful train. So trade in your heaviness and put on this garment of praise. You make your praise.
darkness tries to roll over my bones But when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Let's sing that again when darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken It's my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love and my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love and my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love
that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things I see and this reckoning. I know I'll never be alone.
One of the many breakthrough moments I had with the Lord, <clears throat> one of them that stands out as we sing this, that breakthrough moment when I realized that the Lord wasn't near because I asked him to be near. He didn't just draw close when I prayed. It was the revelation that God was always near. And for me, that is huge because it breaks so many lies that our flesh wants to tell us that God is not happy, that God doesn't love, God can't be near me when I'm this or I'm doing that or I'm thinking this or I'm acting like or if I'm going through something bad or something hard God's waiting at the end of it thank you for the breakthrough understanding that God is with me in it whether I'm struggling with the grossest of sin or if I'm struggling in my own mindset or if I'm pushing hard or if I'm even lazy God is there it doesn't mean he's authenticating what I'm doing or authorizing how I'm feeling that's the misconception the reality is he is close because he wants all of him to be experienced by all of me in my greatest time of need. So when I'm feeling the heat of that fire, it is that cooling presence of the Lord that causes me to stand or walk through. All morning, I'm just going to tell you how I've been feeling. I've been feeling old-fashioned. Just telling you how I've been feeling. I've been feeling like an altar call. Like the Lord is calling His children who think they're afar off. Who think that the way they've been living or the way they've been thinking has caused them to be afar off from God. And all morning I just hear the Lord saying, Come. Come. Because I am close. I am right here. So I'm going to ask this. I remember back when I first got saved, I remember having preachers in services say, okay, I want everyone to stand up. So I'm going to do that right now. Everybody stand up because I know it's been an hour and you guys are like, seriously? And then the preacher would say, every eye closed. Every head bowed. Anybody remember that? I know we're in a collective moment on a Sunday morning, but I'm going to ask for the next couple of moments, it's just you and the Lord. And I just want to speak the same words I spoke those years ago. God, I don't understand why. And I don't understand how. But you're pursuing me. And I can't help but notice. And I can't help but turn my head at your advances. I have been weakened by my own resistance to you. And I'm tired of running. And I'm tired of turning away from your love. And so here I stand today and I turn to the one who's turned to me. And I really don't know what to do next, but I turn and I say yes. That's 
all I know what to say. I just say yes. I say yes to this love. I say yes to this pursuit. I say yes to this faithfulness when I've been unfaithful. I say yes to this pursuit when I've run from it. I say yes to this love when I've acted like an enemy of it. I even say yes to a God that I didn't think you were because I've heard what the church or what Christians have said about you. And now that I've experienced this love, this, this grace that I have not earned, that I have not worked for, that I have not paid for with a righteous, holy life. You just give it to me anyway. So I say, yes. So have your way with this life. Oh God of love, have your way with this heart that doesn't even know how to lead my own life. Have your way here. Restore me, please, restore me because I've been broken by my own choices. Make all things new like we sang today. I want to be new. And so Jesus, I say yes. I say yes to who you have shown me God is. And may my life from this day forward continue to say yes. And when I say no, I ask that your love do what it's doing to me right now. And it turn me back and remind me of my healing, of my restoration, of my all things new. And so I turn to you. And now I choose to walk with you. The one who walked with me in all of my crap, I now walk with you in newness of life. You've been faithful to me in my stuff. And now I choose and I ask that you help me to be faithful to you in your stuff. Because you're worthy of it. I believe that this resurrection power can save, can heal, can deliver me, can restore me. And I need it. Come on, someone needs to say that today. I need it. I need this restoration. I need this healing. I need it. So I prayed this prayer for you today, but that's the last one I pray for you. Now it's your turn. Just take a couple moments now as the piano plays. And you talk to him from this new heart.
like you to take just a couple moments here and just greet somebody, hug on them, love them. tell people to stop talking now. Can we trend toward our, our spots for the morning? whistle. Okay, while you're finding your seats, we have two quick announcements for you. Well, one's probably not as quick, but um, did everybody see on the various communication methods that we have baptism coming up? Cool. We're very excited about that as always. It's going to be a Wednesday night this year. August 14th. Um, so the way we've done this in the past is if you're a new believer and you want to be baptized or if you're marking a new season in your life with the Lord and you want to be baptized to mark a newness in your life, we welcome that as well. Come find me or you can find, sign up, well please wait, sign up on the home page of our website. Does anybody have any questions on the baptism? Once, twice, okay, Amber. Thank you. Okay, this Friday, this Friday evening is our Guess Who's Coming to Dinner event, and I love this one. So um, if you don't know how this works, you sign up to be a guest or you sign up to be a host. You just let us know how many, if you're going to be a host, how many people you can accommodate. Um, and don't forget about children. A lot of us have a lot of kids. So <laughs> we bring them with us when we come to dinner. Also, if you are a host, I'm sorry, if you're a guest, how many people are you bringing? So we, we're not surprised when, you know, the van of kids show up, because we have those. 
Um, today's the last day to sign up for that. I posted it again today in the family page. Also, you can sign up on, there's a, one of the high top round tables out there. If you want to do it in a paper form, you can do that. If you have any questions at all, please come see me. I'll be out in the lobby after, after the gathering today. Um, again, it's so fun, and I really encourage you guys to get together. The weather we're hoping to be is fantastic. We can be outside. Um, so guess who's coming to dinner? Be a host, be a guest. Today is the last day to sign up. I will be sending out emails or however you ask me to um, contact you on Wednesday. So you will have an address as to where to go or how many is coming. Okay, thank you. One more quick announcement. Um, if you guys haven't seen on the Who Family page um, or heard about it, we're doing our annual kickball game at the Memorial Park at four o'clock today. Um, so bring your kids. Um, it's open to all the family, um, friends, neighbors, like bring them all. It's gonna be awesome. So four o'clock today, Memorial Park, Chambersburg. Is that it? Does anybody else have something they wanna say? Yes. We're going to take your money that you want to give. Can I have the baskets? Is this the baskets? Oh, they're coming. Oh, look at that. All right, bring your offering up. Huh? Oh, we need to hum offering music. It's the first thing that came into my head. Bet it all. Bet it all. Okay, and then the kids can be dismissed. If this is your first time here and you're a kid, head that way. Just head where everybody else around your height's heading. Classrooms are off to that side. Okay, I'm going to be in Exodus chapter 15 to start. Any paper Bibles in the house? I love to hear paper Bibles turning. Yeah, I love it. Exodus 15. This is right after the Lord parts the waters of the Red Sea and all of the Israelites who are leaving Egypt are saved by the Lord from the Egyptian army. And they're just on the other side of the Red Sea. And in verse 22 is where I want to start. Then Moses, let this be better. Hey, look at that. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, it was named Marah. Guess what Marah means? Hey, good job. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What shall we drink? I just love that. Three days after being walking through a dry sea and they start grumbling. I just, I don't know, maybe I guess if I was thirsty, I would start grumbling too, but and I would just remember those seas parted and probably not grumble. And then he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree and he threw a tree into the waters and the waters became sweet. And there he made for them a statute <clears throat> and a regulation. And there he tested them. And he said to them, 
if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians. For I, the Lord, am your healer. Those words just struck a a really deep chord in me this week as I thought about the phrase, I am the Lord, your healer. And I think back to, uh, like I'm reminiscing a lot today. I don't know why. I normally don't reminisce, so you're just going to have to bear with me. But anybody remember the song from back in the 90s, I am the God who heals thee? Yeah? Yeah, right, right, right. See? Good. I'm glad Joyce is here. She remembers all those songs. Those are like the first, some of the first songs of my Christian walk with the Lord. But um, I think this is an important reminder for us today that even though we're in the Old Testament, and I, I am not a, a preacher who preaches a lot from the Old Testament because I believe a lot of the Old Testament is story and not necessarily gospel. I think we can look at stories in the Old Testament through the person of Jesus and see the gospel. But if we look at the Old Testament in and of itself, I think we can uh, not see clearly. But here is something very important that I believe the Lord is reminding us of in 2019. And he says, I am the Lord, your healer. I'm going to say one of these statements at the beginning, and then I want hopefully some of the other verses and some of the things I say that will back this up. But I am concerned that in 2019 that we are more excited about an accepted life than a transformed life. I am concerned as a leader in the body of Christ that the church has become settlers in the idea that we're accepted in the love of God rather than allowing that love to transform us. Are you hearing me yet? There's a sound in the earth today that I believe is a partial sound and not a full sound. The partial sound is, come for you are accepted. How many people know that is truth? 100%. You are accepted in Jesus Christ. All the earth is fully and completely. Jesus' death on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, cries out from history into present day and says mankind is accepted in the beloved. But that's not the whole truth. And one of the great concerns I have as a father of children as a leader in the church, that if we don't give the fullness of the gospel, we miss out on, I am the Lord, your healer. You see, that's the fullness of the gospel. I I think that we have forsaken the power of a transformed life and we have rejoiced around the altar of being accepted. How are we doing so far? And what we end up doing, when I rejoice, and I'll just speak for myself personally, when I rejoice around the idea of being accepted, here's the thing, the Lord's in the midst of my acceptance because He's the one accepting me. He's the one who loves me. He's the one who has allowed His broken body to bleed out on my behalf that I might participate fully in the Father, Son, and Spirit. Do you know that Father, Son, and Spirit do not exist any longer without us. This is important that you guys realize this, that all of humanity and all of the Godhead have always been designed to be one. That That was the plan from the very beginning. And so when God, sorry, when man turned away from that oneness, Jesus made a way for that oneness to be sealed forever. And here in that oneness and in that acceptance, there's so much just joy. There's another word that I felt this morning as I was praying. In the acceptance is relief. Has anybody felt relieved in the presence of the Lord? Like 
Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's peace. It's like, like the weight isn't so heavy anymore. Like the weight, not waiting. But the weight isn't so heavy anymore. Like the, the suffering kind of has a reprieve. Anybody experienced that from like the presence of the Lord? And I, I, I love the relief that God offers in accepting me in his love. But in, if we stop at, and if I, if I want to like kind of create this like a journey, if I stop at the altar of acceptance and I don't continue forward in my walk with God past the God who accepts me to I am the Lord your healer, then I, I begin to camp here and I've, Instead of recognizing that my brokenness is actually brokenness, if you camp at the altar of acceptance, your brokenness can be uniqueness. I want you to think about that for a minute. If the gospel stops at you are accepted and doesn't continue and journey on into the I am the Lord, your healer. Are you with me so far? This is important. I need you to be with me. If you're only camping out at acceptance, then that which has not been healed yet is unique. And it makes you special. And it makes you who you are. And that is a... That is a Partial gospel. The gospel is, the doorway is, I am accepted in the beloved as I am, who I think I am right now. I am fully accepted. And the acceptance is not an end. It is a beginning. Please say this with me. Acceptance is my beginning. It is not the end. I would never want you to camp out at my door. I welcome you into my house. It would just be weird. The doorway is for Jehovah's Witnesses. And for encyclopedia salesmen. Yeah, I just said that. I mean, if you're going to welcome them into your house, you better be ready. Because they're coming at you prepared, are you? If you're not prepared, leave them at the door. <laughs> no, sorry, I'll probably have to repent for that later. I will not camp out here. I've done this in different areas of my life. God accepts me as I am here, and He does. There is absolute truth in that. There is no denying that. Man, Zacchaeus jumped out of that tree and said, I'm coming to your house today. There was no change in Zacchaeus yet. He was just excited that Jesus wanted to come. But then there was a repentance that took place. There was a change that took place. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, Jesus is in my house. Okay, if I defrauded anybody, remember what he said? How many of you remember what Zacchaeus said as a result? How many times? Seven times. I'm not sure if that's right or not, but it sounds really good. I actually don't remember. I was asking you guys for how many times. If I defrauded anyone in their taxes, I will not only repay what I defrauded them, but maybe seven times as much. I know I'm the guy up here. I'm supposed to know that stuff. Sorry, right this moment, I don't remember the number. I'm going with Dan. It's seven. There was a change that took place. He could have rejoiced in the fact that Jesus wants to come to my house, and he does. He wants to come to our house, and he wants us in his house. And it's an awesome experience to have the Lord accept us and to say, yes, you are mine. But then, as you get in the door, there's the sound of healing in the walls and in the atmosphere. And it calls deeper past the joy of your acceptance. And it says something along the lines of this. And I know this might sound really like Old Testament-y. But if you will give earnest heed to my voice, 
And if you do right in my sight, if you give ear to what I say, and let me change the keep all my statutes. Let me change it because this is what the gospel, if you look through the gospel to the Old Testament, this is what it says. If you give ear to my voice and if you live my life, None of the diseases that are on all the others who don't give ear to my voice and don't live my life, you won't have those diseases. You won't have those issues, those struggles, those problems. Because my life is healing. Do you hear that? I want you to know that through the door of being accepted in the Beloved, is a journey of healing and restoration and a marked change that takes place as the result of desiring to live with the one who accepts you. How are we doing so far? I want to read a couple of the verses to you. Actually, I'd like you to read them to me. Someone pull out Exodus chapter 23, just eight chapters later. Come on. I want a paper Bible reader, and I need a microphone. Well, I'm sorry, what did you say? Four times. Four times, okay. That's, hey, Dan, that was a good try. Zacchaeus is like, thank goodness I didn't say seven times. Okay, that one is dead. I need a microphone that works here. Give me a second. Is this one on? Hello, hello. Not yet. I really want someone else to read this. Yeah. Exodus 23. Yeah. Try that out. Who's got it? Exodus 23. All right. Uh, I want you to start reading in 23. Get it? 23, 23. And I want you to read all the way down to, oh yeah, lots of verses. You're going to regret ever raising your hand. I want you to read all the way down to 33. Can you do it? Exodus 23, 23, down to 33. Got it. Go. Do not spread false reports. Wait, Exodus? Exodus 23, 1, right? 23. Oh, 23. Yeah. Exodus 23, 23. I wasn't repeating myself. I was actually saying the verse. Ah. <laughs> okay. My angel will go ahead of you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Perez, Mark, Perez, I'm sorry. Perezites, Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites, and will wipe them out. Do not bow down before their gods or worship them. I, I really want you to pay attention to what she's about to say. Start in 24 again. Do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. You must demolish them and break their sacred stones to pieces. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take... Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. What? Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. Come on, Lord. I will take away sickness from among you. Say it again. I will take away sickness from among you. Say it one more time. I will take away sickness from among you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Joyce, I like talking like you. Let's talk more like that. I like that. Keep going. And none will miscarry or be burdened in your land. Come on, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive the Hivites, Canaanites, and Hittites out of your way. But I will not drive them out in a single year because the lamb will be 
become desolate. Here's the problem. Let me just stop right there. This is really important. He doesn't drive them all out at one time. That's why this is a process from acceptance. So you have to look at the Old Testament through the New Testament. Don't read this dry or you're going to just see this kind of sterile perspective. This is a process of life he's talking about. Don't think of her uh, Hittites and Jebusites and Perizzites as actual peoples. Think about them as influences of this world that must be destroyed so that you will not walk according to any other way but the Lord's way. Do you hear it? Okay. That's why the Old Testament, if you just read the Old Testament, you get a perspective of God that is unhealthy. You must see it through Jesus, who is the fullness of God. All right, go ahead. Sorry I keep interrupting you, Katie, but I love to. Okay, go ahead. But I will not drive them out in a single year, because the lamb will become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you, until you have increased enough to take possession of the lamb. Until you have healed enough. To take possession of the land. You will be overrun dancing around. I'm accepted. You'll be chewed up and spit out by the littlest of foxes. They, you think they're your pet. Nah, uh As long as this is your campsite, they rule you. And so as you walk past the door of I'm accepted and begin to walk according to this voice and this life that's bur burgeoning on the inside of you, you slowly grow stronger and your diseases begin to fall off of you. And that which used to master you, you say, turn your back. <laughs> you must heal. And the Lord, your healer, is among you. Keep going. Keep going. Guys, so good. So good. I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert to the river. I will hand over to you the people who live in the land and you will drive them out before you. Hear what I hear at the end of 31? I do not hear that you're going to subdue enemies and they're, you're going to rule over them. You know what I hear? I will deliver every influence of the land into your hand and you will turn them into good. You will turn those things that were against you, that tried to take you away from me, and you will turn the tides of culture. You will, you will shift the sands that try to cause people to fall, and you will rule rightly in the earth. I'm getting chilled. Literal, physical chills. Okay, okay go on. Sorry. I don't even know where I interrupted you. Do not make a covenant with them or with their gods. Do not agree with that which caused you to be diseased in the first place. You must make a decision as a person to no longer agree with what kills you. You must make that decision. Jesus' life on the inside of you will empower that decision, but it's only our turning. Stop making covenants with things that are against you. That's what he's saying here. Keep going. Say that again, by the way. Say 32 again. Do not make a covenant with them or with their gods. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Not good. 33. Do not let them live in your land. What? Don't even let them live in your land. Call the land your life. Call the land your house. Don't let these things that are against you, against who he originally created you to be, don't let them have a home. But man, if you're rejoicing in acceptance and not, I am the Lord, your healer, then you've got all kinds of pets in your house. And when someone who is walking in, I am the Lord, your healer, comes visits your house, they're like, wah! you got beasts living here. Let me finish, because i got more to say about that. But go ahead, finish this. They shall not live in your land. That's what I have. What do you have? Beginning of 33? Do not let them live in your land. Right. They will cause you to sin against me, because the worship of their gods will certainly be a snare to you. Do you guys hear that? 
I, I want to read that. What version of the Bible do you have, Kate? Oh. NIV? That's okay. It's somewhat holy. Um, <laughs> actually, there's a lot of... I, I think the NIV gets a bad rap. There's a lot of good translations inside there. Some really bad, but some good. Let me read 33 from mine. They shall not live in your land because they will make you sin against me. And don't think of it in terms of like offending God. God is past being offended by us, okay? Way past it. This is not about God. I hope you're not offended. Okay, that's a feelings thing. Get away from that. Here's the idea. When you hear the words, don't let them live in your land because you will sin against me, it means you'll fall short of who you were created to be in me. If you let these influences that hurt you, that deceive you, that kill you, if you let them dwell, if you say they're accepted, I'm in the altar of acceptance. I'm being silly on purpose. I hope you understand. If you rejoice here, if you live here, if you think this is your victory, you have a partial, and I want to say this, powerless gospel that empowers things that kill you. The gospel is I am the Lord, your, everybody say it with me, healer. So why, like, like anytime I've ever gone to the doctor, which is not very often, I'll admit right away, it's rare that they prescribe medications before they tell me what I should not be doing or I should be doing. Has anybody ever experienced that? If you have a good doctor, if you have a good health professional, they will tell you life practices that will benefit you and get you out of some of the pain that you're experiencing. Have I ever experienced that from their doctor? I think I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again because it's one of my favorite stories of my childhood. I was 11 years old, and I was really struggling with asthma. How many people have heard me tell this story before, if you've heard me? Okay, a couple of you heard me. Okay. So my mom takes me to the doctor because the little bit of medication I was taking wasn't working. And so we go to the doctor, and it's a Jewish doctor, Dr. Silverberg. He was awesome. And my mom is like, she's a registered nurse, and so she's like, this boy needs a medication to control it. He can't go out and play for more than five or ten minutes. If my husband tells a joke, he starts wheezing because he's laughing so hard, and I laugh at everything. So you can imagine I'm wheezing all the time. It's like, this boy needs help. And Dr. Silverberg just looks at my mom and then looks at me. He says, well, maybe he ought to start swimming. And my mom kind of looked at me and I kind of looked at her. <laughs> this is not the advice we were expecting from a doctor who went to medical school and knows medicines and all that stuff. And so my mom asked, well, why is that? She goes, every time you put your head in the water, what do you do? You hold your breath. And then every time you take your mouth out of the water, of course, you, you take a breath. And if you do that over and over again, you're strengthening your lungs. He says, if he starts swimming on a regular basis, you'll strengthen that which is weak. Well, that's pretty cool. He wasn't done. He says, he ought to take up an instrument that you have to blow into. So I thought, I ain't playing a flute, that's for sure. <laughs> And again, the same thing. When you blow, you're, like, it takes power. Has anybody ever played a blowing instrument? Yeah. Like, it takes power. It takes strength. As a result, Dr. Silverberg was the reason why I became a trumpet player and the reason why I became a swimmer. And by the time it was all over, I can credit Dr. Silverberg with me being an all-American swimmer. And it was really because he wanted to strengthen my lungs. You see, that's a healthy health professional. And so I'm going to just, I know this might feel like anthropomorphism where I'm putting God inside a human flesh, but in that moment, now that I look back from, four, I'm almost 50 years old, I look back at that 11-year-old boy sitting in that, on that butcher paper. They even had that butcher paper back when I was 10 and 11 years old. You're sitting on that stuff and it's cold. And Anyway, I look at that boy and I recognize that I was looking at the face of the Lord who wasn't just going to prescribe something to me that kept me weak. As a result today, I want to tell you something. I, <clears throat> I once in a while have to take something. What's, what's 49 minus 11? Really quick, 38, am I right? 
I got some math teachers in here, so I have to show off. I got that fast. <laughs> it's been 38 years. I have taken less medication in 38 years than I did in my first 11. Simply because someone who was the face of the Lord to me said, I'm not going to keep you weak. I'm going to do what it takes that you be strong. And what this does, I refuse to be a preacher of or a son of a gospel that keeps people weak. In the name of acceptance. Do you hear me? I need to know that not just a few that are clapping hear me. I need to know that the rest of you hear me. There is a full gospel. The power of acceptance is good. The power of a healed and transformed life is divine. Yes. Yes. Let us journey past being accepted. Let us journey through it. There is a purpose to this altar. And it is a beautiful altar. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Period. Is there a period there? No. no. And I will give you rest. Go look up what the word rest means. I won't do it for you. In fact, let's go look at the verse. Can we go look at that verse? <laughs> Together. Come on. Everybody go with me. Matthew 11. If you didn't know where that was, I want you to remember forever that come all you who are weary and heavy laden. It's Matthew 11. And I believe it's like 28-ish. Right? Everybody go there, go there, go there, fast, fast, fast. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, right? Yeah, there it is. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a homework assignment for you. If you already have your phone out, you can hit your little thingies and you can look up the Greek and Hebrew of that. Powerful. It's not just you're tired so you can... Take a load off. It is more than that. It is, I will restore your soul. Psalmist, David, Psalm 23. Anybody, who can recite Psalm 23 with me? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me like, oh, who's got that microphone? Because I think this needs to be said in a Scottish accent. Oh. And I've got to have the words. It's okay. You, 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 oh, you find it? Because I think it needs to be read with one of those accents that just makes you remember it forever, you know? <laughs> I could do it, but it won't sound yes, as good if you would do it. <laughs> see? See how terrible that was? I can do it. No, you, you don't. You just <laughs> sit there. <laughs> you have an anointing to listen. The Lord is my shepherd, and yes. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. All right. Okay, so when he takes us to those, those waters and he lets us sit down with him, that's the acceptance. But then he does something in the acceptance. He restores our soul. Do you hear that? There's a restoration process. Don't skim over that. Don't skip by it because we're going to walk through a valley of a shadow of death and we need him. No, stay in the restores my soul. I got to be there. I just, that, those three words take a long time. Anybody else? I am still 29 years in restore my soul. And here's the reason why I'm still in 29 years of restore my soul. Because I still live among wolves. I still live among resistance that doesn't want my soul restored. Hello? But if we can live in that place, you're going to read more in just a second, I promise. If we can live in that place, you're not just accepted there, you're restored there. And then you become light and salt and incredible goodness for the earth that is being overrun are the things that are killing you. Keep going. Let's just have fun. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. What kind of paths? Here, all of my paths are already righteous because I'm accepted. It's all good. If God accepts me, that means all my paths are already righteous. Everybody go, ah! Here, 
that feels good and it seems right. But if you just could take one step inside the door, just take one step inside the door and you recognize there's all new paths that bring life. But here you can act like they don't exist because what a great door. Look at this door. It's solid, strong. But right inside the door are these paths and he guides me in these paths of righteousness. Keep going. For his name's sake. Yes. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come. Oh, we just sang about that today. That was powerful. Keep going. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yep. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. Stop. Stop. How do goodness and mercy follow you if you stay camped in acceptance? The only way something can follow you is if you are moving, journeying. Is that a word? Is journeying a word? It is today. Thank you, Lisa. We are journeying, and as I journey, goodness and mercy follow me, or goodness and loving kindness. Keep going. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Where are you going to dwell? Where are you going to dwell? Come on, I feel like I'm a cheerleader right now. Where are you going to dwell? <laughs> Who's going to dwell in the door? <laughs> Of all the people in the... <laughs> You're going to dwell in the house. And this house is a house of... The Lord. The Lord who is your... He's your healer. He's your restorer. That was beautiful. Thank you for reading that. I wasn't even planning on doing that. That was so powerful. I'm going to actually stop right there. This is what I'm going to pray for you today. And I'm not just praying for you. I'm praying for all those who will come in contact with you this week. I pray that they would experience the God who accepts them and the God who heals them. Because he's one and the same. And my prayer is that every human being would come face to face with the fact that they are absolutely, completely beloved and celebrated. Like, this is the way I saw it this morning as I was praying for us today. I actually saw, like, like this acceptance. Like, when Jesus accepts us, he celebrates us. And I heard, like, this loud party. That's what I heard. Like, the Lord was the party, and he was loud, and he was raucous. Anybody had a loud party? Anybody been in a loud party? Anybody been in a loud, righteous party? I know a lot of you have been in loud, unrighteous parties. But I'm talking about loud parties that actually awaken your original identity. And I, that's what I heard. I actually like, saw the Lord so celebrating. Remember when it says that, that all of heaven and the angels celebrate when one person turns to the Lord? You know that verse? Like, I heard like that celebration... In the turning. So let's say I'm that person that turns and then all of a sudden I hear that celebration and it like awakens the son or the daughter on the inside of me. And I was like, whoa, oh my gosh, I I'm a son, I'm a daughter. I, I, I felt like the celebration of the Lord awakens me. And almost like out of a slumber, out of like this numb state and brings me back to life. That's what I heard today. I pray that as people encounter you, that they experience such celebration that the who they really are awakens. And they begin to walk in the healing. Let's stand together. <clears throat> Father, I thank you for the power of the gospel the power of who Jesus is, for I believe Jesus is the gospel. And the gospel is good news. 
And the good news is we are accepted. Hallelujah. I am so thankful that I am accepted in God. But there's even better news. I don't just want someone to take my appointment. I don't want someone to just accept me past the waiting room into the room where the doctor comes in and says, yep, I see you, I love you, later. No, I want a Dr. Silverberg to walk in and say, let me tell you what's next for you. If you do this, and if you do that, and if you live according to the life that I have for you, you will be healed. And you will be restored. God, I pray for every person in this room today and those they encounter for a vibrant experiences with the person of Jesus. Father, I pray that this week coming up, what are the dates of this week? June 10th? Is, is tomorrow the 10th? 10th through the 16th, 17th, something like that. I pray that this would be a week where we could mark it on our calendars. History will talk to it. We will look back and we will say, we experienced the Lord our healer. And that our lives changed forever because of it. I am convinced that when we have genuine encounters with the person of God, we are healed. We are healed. And please, if you think of this only as a physical healing, you are missing the point of I am the Lord, your healer. Because it's so much more than just physical, but it includes physical. So if you are struggling with your physical health today, I ask that you intentionally turn yourself to the person of the Lord. Not for healing. This is really important. Because the motivation determines the fruit. For sons and daughters especially, I want you to turn to the Lord because He's your dad. And because He is good. And because He loves you. You turn to Him for Him. You turn to Him because of who He is. And here's what I ask that you do. I ask that you, in your turning, you pay attention afterwards to the places that used to hurt. Physically, emotionally, in your mind. I am convinced of this fact because I've seen it in my life over and over and over again. As I continually and practice turning to the Lord, I am healed. I am restored. I am made new. But when I turn to my problems, when I turn to people, when I turn to the things of this world, it reinforces the disease. And so we turn today to you, God. This is going to sound really strange, but I ask that everyone turn 90 degrees to the left. So if I'm right, we're all facing the same direction, which is toward the sound booth. Am I right? Just to make sure I got my lefts and rights right. And I believe with all of my heart that we will experience I am the Lord your healer. So let us walk in your ways, God. Let us leave behind those things and those influences and those parasites and Jebusites and Hittites and those influences of this world that we've allowed to camp inside us, reinforcing disease. We drive them out by living the life we experience in the turning. And healing will come. And I pray, Lord God, that the outflow of this healing will affect Chambersburg, will affect our land, will affect our town, will affect 81, where there'll be no death. Our main roads of Route 11 and Route 30, may the overflow of I am the Lord, your healer, in us overflow into our land. That there will be less sickness and death 
There would be abundance and life. Come on, someone agree with me. You're too white today. Let there be life in our land forevermore. We declare that the Lord is healer. He is healer. And we agree with you. But it starts here. It starts right here. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. Have a great week. Oh, Bible study this week, Wednesday. I'd love to see you. Bible study, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock.